All right, this video is regarding Griffin snare drums. For those of you who may be interested in purchasing them, they are very economical. I paid $40 for one of them and $42 for the other one. Uh, the one on the right is a 14-inch uh, standard uh, snare. The one on the left is a 13-inch head piccolo. Don't expect if you buy these to be able to use them right out of the box without any modification. Um, with both of mine, there are issues. The one on the right has far fewer issues and probably will be ready to play in about five minutes. The one on the left um, is much more in depth and I'm going to go through each of them with you and show the repairs that I make to them or modifications, adjustments, whatever you want to call it, so that uh, you would be um, better able to just take these out of the box, especially if you're a new drummer, fix them and have them ready to go. So we're going to start um, with the one on the right, which is the easier one to um, adjust and repair in my, in my case, which is the standard 14 inch snare drum. First of all, let's show you what it sounds like right now. All right, so it kind of has a ring to it. It's not crisp. And there's several things that can cause a snare drum to not sound correct. And I'm going to talk about them, and then I'm going to show you in the case of this particular drum how it came, that there's a very simple fix to it, and it's just going to take a second. But I want to go over the possibilities. First of all, your head could be out of adjustment. I thought that both of my snares came with the proper tension to the heads. I thought they were in good shape. Now, may not be the case when you get one, but mine were fine. Um, the dampener, which you can see showing through right there. The dampener um, on the inside, it's barely touching. That may be something that I want to fix on this one, adjust a little bit. But um, the main adjustment that I do in a minute will determine whether or not I have to do anything with that. And there's a knob on the side of the drum to adjust that. One nice thing about the Griffins, um, it's a very small thing, but it's nice, is that they each come with their own drum key so that uh, you won't have to worry about running to a music shop and buying a drum key if it's out of adjustment. But again, the heads on mine are fine, both bottom and top. The other thing that can happen is that on the snares themselves, you want to make sure that they are um, centered or pretty centered in the drum head, and this one is. This one's in pretty good shape. It could even move either way just a little bit and we'd still be fine. There's um, this clamp here that holds the snares. I like the fact how the Griffin gives you a lot of extra of, of the material. Just in case this were to ever snap here, you'd have enough to fold them again and do that one more time. The other side has a tensioner knob and a lever, which of course will turn off your snares like that and turn them back on. Same type of clamp right here that the other side had, and this adjustment here, this knob. Now, this particular drum, notice when I turn the knob, it lowers the snares. This particular snare came just like I showed you, where it was all the way up. You don't want it like that because you have no room to adjustment or for adjustment to make it tighter. You want it to be nice and tight but still have this not all the way screwed in. You want it like that so that you would be able to slightly adjust as your snare is in use to change the tone just a little bit. So that's the problem with this one is that even when it's all the way tight like they sent it, the snares are still not tight enough. If I simply pull on this side, this right here, like that, and tighten it up, my sound on the snare drum gets much better. So how do we fix this? We simply need to pull this up. But at the same time, I want to fix the problem on this side to where I have some adjustment room with the knob. So I'm going to lower this, and I'm going to open the knob up a little bit, maybe about right there, so that I have some room to work with, maybe a little bit more. You can always overestimate how much you're going to open this up because if you pull it with this closed, it, you're never going to get it fully tight by just pulling it yourself. So I've got a lot of give here now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little 
overhead projector pen uh, that writes on plastic and wipes off, and I'm gonna just draw a line right there. And that's on the plastic, just so I know where it was, and I can make sure as I pull it, I pull it maybe um, an eighth to a fourth an inch, somewhere in that range. So I'm gonna unscrew this right now and do that. Loosen these up a little bit. Now, I'm going to just pull it a little bit. I'm going to hold that. Try to keep it straight. This head is not on straight, the, the rim, but that's okay. It's on straight enough. So I can no longer see my mark. I pulled my mark under. Make sure these are nice and tight. You don't want that slipping back. And now let's uh, turn the snare back on. Oh, I have it on. Okay. Now I'm going to tighten it back up. Sounding better and better. Now I almost had it tightened all the way, but it's nice now. A lot better. still have a tiny bit of room. I could have made it a little tighter, but I still have that fine adjustment. I still have a, a turn or two left on there, so that should be good. If I want it to dampen a tiny bit more, I've got my knob right here that will make this dampener go up, so I will do that a little bit more. You can kind of feel it going against here. We are. So let's demo this one again. All right, so now for the more difficult one, the piccolo. And why is it more difficult? Not because of its size or anything like that. It's just seems like this must have been someone's last job they had to do putting this thing together before they went home for the day. Uh, there's lots of small issues with this one and one particularly larger issue where um, we may have to go through warranty on it, but we'll see about that, see if I can repair it without having to contact the company. So first of all, it sounds very similar to the other one, how it sounded first too. It's just there's different issues causing the problem. So first of all, I want to mention here that... Um, if you look at the bottom, this is off center. It's uh, a lot closer on this side than it is on this side, which normally when I wanted to tighten snares, because this one does need to be tightened also, but normally when I want to tighten them, I want to tighten them on the end without the adjuster. Can't do that here because this is already so close to this side versus the other side. Something else you may notice, the snares look like they're a little bent. Well, if you look at the edge here, look at how crooked that is. That's not even in there straight, and it's crooked on the other side too. So it's, it was not uh, put together well at all. Something else about this snare is on the um, wood over here, or is it on, yeah, right there, there's a bump sticking up starting to poke a hole through this head on the edge here. So that needs to be sanded off. Uh, the dampener is fine. Um, what else? Oh yes, the, the worst problem of all is this. See, the snare drums that, that I, should I say, grew up with, they had um, levers that went to the side and you push back up. There were a few out like this, and I really liked this style because you could just turn it back on so easy. Um, this drum does not turn on easy. See, I'm, it's not turning back on. You have to push it up a little bit, and that's what you used to have to do in a lot of those ones from the side. The other snare that I got, the, the um, larger one that I just repaired, that one is flawless, easy, lift up and down. Really convenient if you're in a setting where you need to go turn your snares off and use the drum as a tom for a very brief time and then turn it back on. 
Um, I would like to get this one to be able to be like that too, so I don't have to lift it up and push it. But worse than that, it made me at first think that these were just decorative, um, because this wouldn't turn. It wouldn't do anything. I fiddled with it a little. I got it to turn a little bit. But see, this one is all the way down. The other one was all the way up. So as you turn this, this should lift up to this piece here. So from there up to there. But it's not doing that. You can turn it a little ways, and that's about right there where it stops. And then from there it appears you're just bending this metal as you screw it. You're not actually lifting this. So something's wrong with this whole mechanism not allowing it to lift up and down. I believe it will have to be replaced, but we're going to try and look at it, see if there's anything that can be done. Because from looking at the other one where I can see in better, it appears that they're riveted and that it's a loose rivet that's supposed to slide up and down or allow this to slide up, slide up and down. But that's not happening. So in order to fix this one and to even see what's wrong for sure, we're going to have to take it apart. I would avoid undoing this head. Um, we have to take a head off in order to get to the, the nuts there that are holding that mechanism on there, the tensioner. So we have to get in there somehow. Normally I would take the top head off, but in this case I'm going to take the bottom head off because these are wrong anyway and it has to come all off. So might as well take the bottom head. And the reason I say that is the top head, these are not expensive, nice drum heads. They have a, um, a coating on them like most snare drum heads do. And so I'm afraid that if I release the tension on this head and then put it back on, I'm going to shorten the lifespan of the head with um, having some of this white start to crack off. So I want to leave this head alone. I want to go from the bottom. Now when you remove a drum head, there's some certain steps that you want to take. But my first thing I'm going to have to do is loosen these up and get these off. So um, let me go ahead and do that and um, then I'll talk to you about taking the drum head off. Okay, so we'll just pull this right through. Go to the other side. Okay, so we'll just set this aside right there. All right, now for the drum head. If you're new at drums, there's an important lesson about tightening or loosening a drum head. A lot of people are tempted just to work around in a circle. You'll end up bending your rim. You don't want to do that. What you do is you go across. So I'm going to start in a spot that I can remember, which is right next to this, and I'm going to loosen two turns like that, or two half turns. Now I'll do this one. Then I go uh, directly um, over here, like that, and then I come across from that one. And what you're doing is you're releasing the tension evenly around, or as even as possible. Now this head is already getting quite loose. It's to the point now where it easily turns. Okay, so now I think we're to a point where, yeah, these are finger tight now. So now it really doesn't matter, now that we've loosened the head. So I'm gonna take these out. And when you take these out, you'll see that there's a washer, or it should be a washer, with each, um, with each one, like that. So I'm gonna set these aside and I'll come back when they're all out. Okay, once they're all out, I can simply lift the rim and the head off. Just like that. 
set it aside. And now I've got the inside exposed to the drum. Let's see how tight these are. They are very tight. Okay, so what I have over here is I have a little um, um, socket wrench set. So I'm going to see if I have anything that will fit. That's too small. How about this one? Too small. Almost. That's probably too big, but nope, that's just right. Okay. So I'm going to put this on this screwdriver that I, or this socket wrench screwdriver I have here. And I'm going to see about, sorry, loosening that up, and then I'll loosen this one up. Now it should be able just to be removed. Yep. I'm going to set that one aside. Set that one aside. And this does, this should just come right off. It's not really wanting to, so I think it's loose, but it's just. I think in order to avoid uh, breaking this uh, black covering here, I'm going to actually unscrew them. I think it'll come right out then. Okay, so here it's off. There were two plastic washers that came off in the process that go on the inside, just like on this side over here. So I want to make sure we put those back when we uh, assemble this. So here's the setup. And let's take a closer look. All right, so as I suspected, they are riveted through there. I don't know if you can see down in there. And they are very tight on this unit. Um, they are not loosely riveted like they should be to where they could slide up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go tap this and see if it's just something that can be unstuck. I'm also going to try to loosen it, but I need both hands. So. I'll be right back and see what we get. All right, so I was able to fix it. I'm gonna show you how I did it. Notice I can turn it really easily now. So how I did it was I took it out to my garage, turned it a little ways until it stopped. Then I, and if I'm pushing it down like this, turning it to go down, I'd set it like this and I'd tap it on both sides, right here and right here. And then I'd be able to turn it a little further. And I'd undo it and go the other direction, flip it and tap it until I was able to get the full range of motion. I'd trade back and forth going each direction, and finally I was able to pretty much go the whole way. I mean, I could have spent a little longer on it, but the longer you spend on things like this, the more chance of actually breaking it, and it now will serve the purpose. It does what it needs to do. So let's go ahead and reassemble this drum, and we should have it in good shape. Okay, so I pushed the screws in just a little ways, but I'm going to screw them in the rest of the way because I don't want to take a chance of damaging or cracking this black shell around the edge of the drum. Okay, so now we can look inside. Let's put our washers back on. And uh, the washers do have a flat side. The flat side goes against the drum. And now I will put these uh, nuts back on. And let's tighten them up. I've got the socket and I've got the regular screwdriver, so I'm going to hold this one here. Just turn one of them. I'll turn the inside one. Okay, it got to be finger tight, so now I'm going to switch to the other side and do the same thing. Okay. Don't want to do it too tight. We don't want to crack the wood. Just make sure it's nice and snug. Okay, so before I put the drum head back on, remember that over here, there was that bumpy spot. So right here, there's a big bump. And the rest of it's fine, but while I've got it off, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sand this down. Got some sandpaper here. Okay, so that should be good. Now, one thing you want to make sure is you're going to seal this up. Make sure you blow it out 
so that you don't have any sawdust inside your drum. All right, so it's time to put the drum head back on. There it is. And you know, if it's an older drum, of course you want to try to get it to where the snares were, but since this is a brand new drum head, there's no scratches or wear from the snares hitting it, so it really doesn't matter to get it back on exactly the same spot. What you do want to make sure of though, this is your first time, make sure that these uh, slots for the snare to go, for the um, the plastic go through that holds the snares is lined up correctly. And so now we'll go ahead and stick these, uh, these uh, drum screws back in and just put them all in to finger tight. Yeah, put all the screws back in, ready to tighten them up. Just a note, I went ahead and I did go from across um, each way as I worked my way around putting them in. Uh, they just went in better that way. Um, it's always better to crisscross and go work your way across. So I'm going to start from my starting point again. I pick a spot and I'm going to turn it maybe uh, three times like that, three half turns. One, two, three. Now it may have looked like I did more than three there, but that was because it wasn't quite finger tight. So now I'm going to go here. One, two, three. I'm going to go here, one, two, three, and then here, one, two, three, and then over here, one, two, three. And I'm going to feel it. It's still not tight enough. One more here, one more here, one here, one here, one here. One here. And one here. Now let's check it again. This is really close. Maybe one more all the way around. One, or even a quarter. That's a plenty, so a quarter. Just like that. Okay, and now we're ready to put our snares back. Okay, so let's put the snares back. So I'm gonna stick these plastic, this plastic through here. I'm going to stick the plastic through the other side, just like that. I'm going to try to center it. Now, this has been adjusted, the knob has been adjusted about halfway, so I'm going to try to make it uh, very uh, tense in that manner, and then I can adjust it a little bit. I'm going to slide these two through here, and that's about right. So now I'm going to, I'm going to slide through this side too. center it on here and I want to be able to pull them nice and tight centered so I'm going to make sure they're centered on both of these I'm going to pull it this way a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and tighten this one up nice and tight you don't want it to slip out I've had that happen too many times back in my earlier drumming days do the same thing over here but this time I'm going to pull it nice and tight like that of course it's not going to be as tight as it needs to be but it's going to be enough to get us to be able to adjust our tension knob this seems fine but i'm going to go ahead and just i'm not sure if these screws are quite tight enough that one seems like it is yeah they're good okay it actually sounds better than when I got it, but it's still not as tense as I can have it. So I'm going to screw this to bring it up a little bit. I still want it to sound yeah, still off. Much, much better. Tighten up a little bit more. And the handle is working now. It was getting caught when it first came to where you had to lift up. It's, it's much better. It's still a little stuck, but not bad. You don't have to lift up on the bottom anymore. Uh, one tip here. 
I'm going to take this extra. Some people will be tempted to cut this off, but this is enough to fold again should this ever break. So I'm going to take this and just tuck it back under the, um, the unit right there so that it stays like that so it's not in my way. And for this one, I'm going to stick it up through here, through the lever, like that. So that's in good shape. I'm going to tighten the dampener a little bit, and then we'll try this thing out. All right, so I hope you found this helpful and useful if you're going to be purchasing these drums. Again, I think for $40 each, you can't beat the price. I spent a little bit of time on them, but uh, not much. Not much at all for considering um, you buy a good snare drum for several hundred, and I have two for less than 100 So anyway, I'm pleased with them. They'll, uh, they'll get a lot of life out of them. And as um, the heads go bad, etc., I'll put uh, much higher quality heads on them. So they're only going to get better. Hope you found this useful. See you next time.